Is oxygen required to survive and oxygen not included? It's literally in the name. And what about the calorie count for your duplicates? Do they really need that much food? And why is dirt always the first choice for building material? Well, today we'll find out as we explore the science of oxygen not included. We should start with the basics. Let's first examine the height of the duplicants. If we assume the duplicants are of average height, that would put them at around 5 feet 4 inches or approximately 1.6 meters. We also know that duplicants are roughly 2 blocks tall. For the purpose of this example, we will then assume that each block is about 3 feet high. Using this information, we can also determine the sizes of other objects in the game. By comparison, a standard battery is about the same height as the duplicates. Turns out those are some massive batteries. While most of us don't see them, factories and other industries use similar huge batteries. So while 6 feet or 1.8 meter tall batteries seems crazy at first, they're actually pretty normal. But given the context of the game, it's pretty wild to think that a duplicate is eye level with a battery. Similarly, the storage bins are also around 6 feet tall or 1.8 meters. But how much do you think will fit inside one of the storage bins? A standard storage unit in game can hold up to 20 tons. Yes, that's right, 20 tons or just over 18 metric tons. Let this number sink a little bit because a fully loaded semi truck could easily weigh 20 tons or more. Picture a large semi truck which normally exceeds 72 feet in length or approximately 22 meters fitting inside one of these storage units. That's impressive. Normally I would leave this one here but I really want to be able to expand on this storage container concept with actual math. Maybe the material in question is just extremely dense. If we re-examine the container, we know the height to be 6 feet and can guess the width to be close to around 3 feet since it only takes up 1 square in game. Similarly, even though we can't see the side view, we can assume the depth to be about 3 feet as well. Using these numbers, we can determine the volume, which is about 54 cubic feet, or just over 1.5 cubic meters. We also know the container can hold 20 tons, or about 18,143 kilograms. With these numbers, we can roughly estimate the density of the material being held inside using the following formula. Basically, density equals the mass divided by the volume. In this instance, we know the volume, and we're going to assume the mass is at its full capacity of 40,000 pounds. So the density calculates out to 740 pounds per cubic foot, or 11,853 kilograms per cubic meter. That sounds impressive, but what does that actually mean? Well, while you can gather all sorts of materials, a fully loaded storage container has about the same density as lead, which comes out at around 709 pounds per cubic square foot, or 11,356 kilograms per cubic meter. Moving on, let's dig into the fragility of our duplicates. First, we'll analyze their calorie intake. Each duplicate needs a minimum of 1,000 calories per day. An average of 2,000 to 2,500 calories are recommended for most adult humans. The duplicates eat all sorts of odd things, but one thing we can compare to the real world is eggs. The average egg is about 78 calories, meaning to get their fill, the duplicates need to eat just under 13 eggs. I would imagine their stomach might hurt a good bit, but their calorie count would be achieved. Here's hoping duplicates don't have any food allergies. We should also consider the starting food choice, meal lice. 
One serving in the game is 1500 calories, but let's compare that to real world. For 1500 calories, you could have two fish fillets, one apple, one serving of broccoli, one cup of rice, a 12 ounce soft drink, and finally a slice of cheesecake. This would still leave you with about 400 calories for a snack. Keep in mind that this would be for an entire day. Either way, I feel like the duplicants are getting the short straw. Maybe the game should be called Calories Not Included as we're starving our poor duplicants. One of the obstacles you must overcome in Oxygen Not Included is waste management. In the game, you must take polluted water and run it through a sieve, which purifies it into water. In terms of waste management, the sieve requires a filtration medium, which is basically sand. Turns out, sand is surprisingly good at removing suspended solids. It can also improve color, taste, and odor, as well as removing most pathogens, which the game doesn't always take into account. In order to remove germs, we need to add a little heat. The heating and cooling process in oxygen not included is very robust. We don't need to dispute the math here, but it's still interesting to investigate how things compare to the real world. In game, germs will start being killed at a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. In the real world, when cooking, a recommended internal temperature of 165 degrees or 74 degrees Celsius will kill viruses and other harmful bacteria. This temperature is a bit high in comparison to the game. Another form of killing germs is pasteurization. There are several different methods that all depend on time and temperature. We should look at just a few. Uh, milk is one of the more common food items that is pasteurized. You could cook milk at 145 degrees or 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes and that would kill all of the germs in the milk. You could also cook the milk at 191 degrees or 88 degrees Celsius for just one second. On top of that, if you wanted to take everything all the way up to boiling point at a 212 degrees or 100 degrees Celsius, you could cook the milk for just 0.01 seconds and it would pasteurize the milk. All of this leads me to believe that 104 degrees simply isn't high enough to kill the germs. Even if we let things stew for a bit, similar to pasteurization, the temperatures wouldn't get high enough to actually kill any of the germs. It's no wonder our duplicate friends are always getting so sick. That being said, if temperatures reach above 127.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 53 degrees Celsius, duplicants will become stressed. Once temperatures reach 158 degrees or 70 degrees Celsius, duplicants will start taking damage. So while they might not look like it, these duplicants are pretty tough. Considering that when humans are exposed to water temperatures of 140 degrees or 60 degrees Celsius, they become seriously burned in just three seconds. Duplicants can take a surprising amount of heat. Now we should move on to air filters. I know it's not the most thrilling, but there's a lot going on here. An air filter can suck up a mixture of gases and separate out specific gases to send them elsewhere in the base. This seems so simple, but is it actually possible? Well, there is a process for separating gases and it's called fractional distillation. This process takes advantage of the fact that different gases have different boiling points. Basically, the desired gas is turned into a liquid while keeping the rest as a gas. The liquid can then be easily separated from the gases. If we compare this to oxygen not included, this process is a little bit more complicated than in-game. We should also talk about some less threatening things, such as building material. Progression through the game allows you to build with all sorts of materials. The main one I want to discuss is dirt. If we really consider it, storage containers and other various items can be built out of dirt. Now granted, some metal is involved, but it's mainly just dirt. This sounds pretty crazy, but it's actually not. Think of a super common building material, such as a brick. A brick is basically just mud, and mud is just water and dirt. Now granted, there are some other things within bricks, but it's just dirt. 
At first glance, it seems kind of weird to be using mud, but really, it's actually super common. If we think about some civilizations that built mud structures, too, it's not that far of a stretch to think that duplicates can start with what they have, a readily available resource, soil or dirt. We should also discuss the amazing creation that is the building tool used by the duplicates. When the duplicates want to build basically anything, they pull out some sort of handheld multi-tool device that spews gears, nuts, and bolts into a desired object. Held there long enough, the object will be built. I'm not an engineer, but I'm pretty sure that's not how this works. We should just accept that oxygen not included takes place in the far distant future and that such device could exist, right? Yeah, let's just leave it and forget about it. No, we will not be leaving this insane device alone. There must be something we can compare to the real world. And as it turns out, we might have something. When an object is to be built, a ghost blueprint appears. The duplicate then goes around and collects the building materials to place in the blueprint. Once building material is present, they begin the odd practice of shooting nuts and bolts. But what if the ghostly blueprint is actually the starting form of a 3D printer? When the duplicates start spewing bits and pieces, they are simply adding the last remaining parts to finish the build. The device used by the duplicants activates the 3D print and allows the finishing touches to be added. It's not perfect, but it's a reasonable explanation. I mean, if they came on a spaceship and crash landed, the technology could be there easily. 3D printing is certainly a technology that exists now. Moving on, let's discuss the main attraction, oxygen. In game, anything below 50 grams per tile is considered unbreathable. Thankfully, we know one tile is 3 by 3 by 3, or 27 cubic feet. Additionally, duplicates use 100 grams of oxygen per second. Using these numbers, let's compare things to the real world. At rest, an average adult consumes about 250 milliliters of oxygen per minute. If we do some conversions, we can compare these numbers to the game. For liquid oxygen, one milliliter is equivalent to 1.14 grams. So 250 milliliters is equal to 285 grams per minute. Taking this further, we can guesstimate a human might need about five grams of oxygen per second. Since our duplicates need a maximum of 50 grams of breathable air, that means they are sucking down oxygen like there's no tomorrow. And honestly, if they're my duplicates, that's probably true. I really wanted to put this idea to the test. I created four custom games with starting areas filled with various gases. If we look at the top two areas, we can see that the top left is chlorine and the top right is hydrogen. Both of these scenarios end pretty quickly for the duplicates. Bottom left is filled with polluted oxygen with a patch of oxalate still available. The final group on the bottom right is a room filled with oxygen, but with the oxalate removed. So the answer to the burning question of whether oxygen is actually required, the answer is yes. With the caveat that polluted oxygen could work, but it's probably not very good for their health. Let's cheer up a bit and discuss the day-night cycle. I would first like to point out something that's always racked my brain. Duplicants experience a day-night cycle, right? Right. And the duplicants are also buried deep below the surface of the planet, right? Right. Well then, what day-night cycle are they experiencing? Could it be artificial? I don't think so, as there's no wires or lights present when you start the game. Your duplicates are just stuck in the middle of the world with no access to traditional sunlight to guide their circadian rhythm. That being said, we came up with three potential explanations. First, maybe there are tiny tubes leading to the surface that allow some light to filter down into the base. This could aid in the possibility of a day-night cycle. 
Given the world we see is flat, it's possible these tubes or holes are just not in our field of view. I personally don't think this is very likely. Plus, you have to remember that if duplicants are similar to humans, our day-night cycle is very consistent due to our specific planet's environment. If the duplicants are deserted on an unknown planet and deep beneath the surface, we have no concept of what the true day-night cycle is like, or even if their planet is close enough to a star for their continued survival. The second option is that the society where the duplicants came from keeps track of the time of day and allows the duplicants to know what time it is. This doesn't exactly explain why it gets dark or mostly dark, but it does explain why the timing is so consistent. Without any other knowledge of the planet, they keep track of time the only way they know how to. A third and final theory that I believe must be true is that the duplicants are in a giant duplicate ant farm. Now hang on, hang on, hear me out on this one. Think about what we are seeing. We view a giant cross section of the planet. There is little to no depth in the base. The duplicants can only go in four directions, up, down, left, and right. I believe the colony is simply an enormous ant farm for the duplicants. This would not only explain our viewpoint as the player, but could also help explain the day-night cycle. The day-night cycle is just the day-night cycle of the world the duplicate ant farm is in. If that last one is true, then we must also consider our role in all of this. Every time we play, are we simply tapping on the glass, watching little duplicates run around for our amusement? Are we the giants with the magnifying glass watching things burn? Maybe just a little. Thankfully, Oxygen Not Included is just a video game for our entertainment, and I think that's a good place to stop. I hope you found this video enjoyable. Please let me know if you think I've missed anything in the comments down below. I would love to make a part two if there's more science things to break down. But with that, I think we're going to have to leave this one here. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying everything. And I will see you guys in the next one. And be nice to your duplicates! See ya!